Good evening. I recently did a video on the question of why it is that the underground lines have names, whereas most metro systems favour letters, numbers or colours. You know, something logical. And while I was writing the script for that, I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to talk about where the actual names of the tube lines actually come from, actually? There is quite a lot of story behind the name, so I'm going to divide this into two. This is part one, dealing with the subsurface lines. That is, the Metropolitan, Hammersmith and City, District and Circle. Part two will deal with the deep level lines. All right, are you sitting comfortably? Not if it's rush hour, you're not. Otherwise, we shall begin. The first underground line was the Metropolitan. The origins of this lie with a Royal Commission of 1846. Full name, the Royal Commission to investigate the various projects for establishing railway termini within or in the immediate vicinity of the metropolis. This determined that, basically, they didn't want any railways in central London. However, a new company, the North Metropolitan Railway, was formed with the idea of getting around the Commission's findings by, simply, building their railway under the city. Well, I say simply, it wasn't very simple at all. But putting that aside, the name was amended during development to the Metropolitan Railway, which emphasised the line's big selling point to investors and passengers. It was a railway through the metropolis. The first section opened in 1863. In 1933, it and all the other underground lines, well, apart from the Waterloo and City, were taken over by London Transport, who simply renamed it to the Metropolitan Line. Ironically, of course, by this point it was far from the only line through the metropolis. The second to be built was the Hammersmith and City line, opening in 1864. This was originally a branch line off the Metropolitan at Paddington, running to Hammersmith. It was jointly owned by the Metropolitan Railway and the Great Western Railway, who owned the main line station at Paddington. So, between them they formed a new company, the Hammersmith and City Railway. Now, if you know your geography of London, you'll know that the original line went nowhere near the city. The idea was that the companies could run trains from Hammersmith over the Metropolitan Railway into the city proper. Services would indeed run further east, eventually getting all the way out to Barking. The Hammersmith and City had effectively been built as a branch of the Metropolitan Line, and it was usually considered as such until 1990, when it started appearing on the tube map as its own separate thing. The district began life as the Metropolitan District Railway, first opening in 1868. Now this is a little bit complicated. The Metropolitan Railway wanted to build a line to the south, which would join up with their main line at both ends to form a circle. The Metropolitan District Railway was formed as a separate company for the purposes of raising money to get the line built. And the idea was that it would eventually be absorbed into the Metropolitan. That didn't happen. The two companies fell out, mostly over money, and so the railways remained separate. At some point, the Metropolitan District began being referred to as simply the District, possibly to avoid confusion, possibly because the district didn't want to be associated with the Metropolitan. I'm not clear exactly when that was, but it certainly appears to have been quite early on. You have to feel a bit sorry for the Circle, which not only had to put up with Mummy and Daddy fighting all the time, but never got a section of track to call its own. The origins of the name are pretty obvious. It was a circular route completed in 1884. The northern part was owned by the Metropolitan Railway and the southern part by the district. It wasn't considered to be a separate line, but rather a route operated by the two companies. It was described as the Inner Circle. Incidentally, there was an Outer Circle as well as a Middle Circle and a Super Outer Circle, but that's another story. Anyway, in 1949, London Transport finally decided to give it its own identity on the map as the Circle Line. As of 2009, the name is no longer accurate. It now uses Hammersmith and City Line track to run out to Hammersmith. So it's kind of a spiral, I guess? As a bonus, let's talk about the East London Line. This isn't an underground line anymore, but it used to be. This was begun as the East London Railway, and the reason for that name was simply that it was a railway in East London. 
It ran from Shoreditch to two stations in New Cross. The East London Railway Company was another of those joint ventures between existing companies. In this case, the Metropolitan Railway, the District Railway, the London Brighton and South Coast Railway, the Great Eastern Railway, the London Chatham and Dover Railway, and the South Eastern Railway. A lot of people wanted this railway built. In 1913, the Metropolitan Railway took over all passenger services on the newly electrified line, and from this point it would generally be considered to be part of the underground. It was officially part of the Metropolitan, but it was almost completely separate. It was often listed as the East London branch under the Metropolitan line. In 1990, it began to be listed on the maps as a wholly separate line. However, it would lose its identity in 2007 when it would be closed and rebuilt as part of the overground. Which it is today, although you can still see the old name on some station maps. So that's where all the subsurface lines got their names, plus one that used to be a subsurface line but isn't anymore. As you can see, the names at present are really not very logical, but ultimately what it comes down to is some name that a Victorian thought up that just stuck around because it was easy to remember. Well, I hope you enjoyed this companionable tale from the tube. If you did, please do leave a like and subscribe for more. I'm planning in the very near future to cover the rest of the lines, the so-called deep level lines, so stay tuned for that or whatever the YouTube equivalent of tuning is. Anyway, a big thank you as ever to my donors on Ko-fi, on Patreon, and here on YouTube for your support. You are the parliamentary bill to my railway company. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio. For your own safety, please stand